Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys episode two of my I Love Spring series. Now this is gonna be $15 tree DIYs. It's gonna be some spring and just fun, easy DIYs you guys can do to kind of jazz up your home for this new spring and Easter season. Now listen, currently it's actually, we have an ice storm going on. So I'm doing this compilation video because I'm afraid that we might lose power and I don't wanna not have a video for you guys for today. So also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can enter my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. I definitely want to spoil one of you guys for that. And the details are going to be in the description box below. You can check that out. Also, hey, pop over to my Livy's Romantic Home Facebook page. I share several DIY videos a day over there for you guys to just keep you guys engaged in crafting. And if you want to recreate some of my DIYs or just share photos of what you're working on in your craft room or in your home with organizing and decorating, join my Livy's Romantic Home Facebook page. It's totally free. It's just a fun place for us to um, unwind and talk about crafts and all of that fun stuff. And I see all of your work. I'm the admin there. And so I'm like a one woman show, just in case you guys are wondering. But anyway, regardless of all of that, I know you guys are here for the crafts and decorating. So let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafty. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I want to show you guys how to make a super adorable little garden gate planter. So from the Dollar Tree, you're going to grab two of their garden gates and just trim off the little little side pieces and the little bottom pieces and you're going to want to use some pretty heavy duty scissors to do that. The next thing you want to do is take some zip ties and just zip tie your little two garden pieces together and you should be able to find these no problem. Our Dollar Tree has been putting out all of the fun spring garden stuff you guys. I'm so excited for some spring dreaming. The next thing I wanted to do was to kind of customize it to make it a little bit more kind of French country which is the style that I love at my home. So I'm taking this flat Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint and I spray painted my little plastic garden gates and now I'm also going to spray paint these little Dollar Tree buckets to match my little garden gate. This is such a fun one to do. Okay, the next thing you want to do is just go ahead and add some hot glue into your little planters because we are going to use some of those ferns that I just shared with you guys in my latest Dollar Tree haul. I also took a crafting tool and poked holes on either side of these little buckets and then I'm just going to zip tie the buckets to the little garden gate um, and you can also use floral wire but I have been really crushing on zip ties lately they're just such a great awesome hole you could get a pretty big pack of them for not too much so then once you have that accomplished you guys can really pretty much find any little garden goodie that you want to plant into your planter now these are those Dollar Tree ferns that I shared with you guys in my last video, I did a Dollar Tree haul with spring goodies and they come about five to six to a pack and I'm pretty impressed with them as far as their quality is concerned. Um, they do look a little bit shiny, of course. They're not totally real looking, but I thought that they were really nice and you can mix them in to some other style of floral arrangements or whatnot. So you guys are gonna have to comment down below and let me know what you guys think about them if you happen to find them in your store. Now these were not in the spring section, but they were in the regular like crafting floral section, at least in my store. I know some stores put them things in different places. The next thing I wanted to do to give it a little bit more of a French country feel was to just distress it with some sandpaper. And I'm just gonna lightly distress the little wording on the front and then along the base. Now that's totally up to you. And you guys can even leave the um, little iron gates or the little plastic gate uh, black if you wanted to have it look more like an iron look. I also did add in some of that Celsius moss to kind of fill in the, the gaps there and boom, how super fun is this? You guys, this is such an amazing little project and really we did this on a total budget. So two dollars ish <laughs> i know it's going up to a dollar 25 but a couple bucks for your gate and your planters and you have such a fun little goodie fun and fabulous on a budget for this Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna share with you guys how you can take some of these cute little Dollar Tree signs. Now I also shared these in my latest Dollar Tree haul, but these were in just the regular frame section. I went ahead and pop off the Dollar Tree wording. It was kind of like a flush brush wash type bathroom sign, which was super cute if I'm gonna use this for the bathroom, but I have other plans for these signs. So what I wanna do is I cut some little floral prints and these are kind of reminiscent to me of like the McKenzie 
Mackenzie Childs florals. If you guys love Mackenzie Childs pattern, you're going to love the black and white check with the florals mixed in. I think it's so fun and beautiful. So this was kind of my take on some of their spring decor. So maybe kind of like a Mackenzie Childs dupes. Anyway, I'm just taking my little Hobby Lobby paper and I'm going to hot glue it to the front of these little pictures. And this is a fun idea for any little pictures that you find at Dollar Tree that you might want to change up a bit. Now, I also shared um, this in my Dollar Tree haul with these lovely little iron hooks. Now, I'm just going to hot glue them to the front of this because I'm going to use it for hair ponies. But if you're going to use it for something um, that you need a sturdier hold to, I suggest you use like a bonding glue, like maybe E6000 glue, um, and also use maybe a little bit of a sturdier bonding glue with your paper. But I thought these would be super fun to just add to the front of these. I love these iron style hooks. I think Dollar Tree really killed it on these. I think they look so high end, like something you would see at Hobby Lobby or TJ Maxx for definitely a much more than a dollar. And these are going to be such a fun little decor piece. I also think they would be nice for hanging jewelry or bracelets or really anything that's fairly lightweight because... Oh, and you know, I just thought about this, but you guys could always, you know, add maybe something a little bit more secure to the back, but here is how they turned out. I think these are so adorable and you can see I hung my little scrunchie band that I had in my hair earlier in this video. My daughter encouraged me to get it. I was so excited because I thought it looked really cute. Like the little scrunchie with the scarf hanging down kind of reminds me maybe of 50s, 60s. I'm not sure um, when that was a style with like the little kerchief shift kind of around the ponytail you guys have to let me know if you know you know um so anyway pretty fun and fabulous little idea on a budget Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you how to make a beautiful kind of little romantic style lantern. I found these wonderful little five by seven frames. And what I want to do is I want to remove um, everything from the frame and then even remove the little clips. Now you remove, remove the little clips that hold the glass in. You want to remove them and go inward when you pull them out. Don't try to pull them out straight the opposite direction or it will break that frame. I have learned that so many times with the Dollar Tree frames. They're really fragile and can break really easy. I did replace the glass back into the frames by hot gluing the glass back, back in and you can always use like a little bit of super glue as well. Um, and now I'm just going to glue them all together and that's going to create my little glass lantern which I think these are amazing for centerpieces or table toppers and you might want to use a bonding glue like E6000 if you're going to be hosting an event so your little um, frames don't pop off or pop apart um, for this project in just my home I think it's fine because it's not going to be moved around or transported but I highly suggest that because these are fairly delicate the next thing I did was take one of those Dollar Tree garden knee pads and I hot glued that to the top of this kind of like using a piece of foam because I want to create a beautiful floral which I thought was so fun I know there's going to be so many bridal and you know Easter centerpieces that are going to be made this season so I thought this was just a really fun idea for you guys to recreate and then you can put whatever you want down below in your little glass lantern so you could put some beautiful candles you could put um, a loved one's picture in there um, a little figurine just really really whatever floats your boat you guys can get so creative with things and just really have fun with it and then I'm also using some of kind of the leftover greenery here to cover in and around the edges of where you can see the little uh, foam knee pad. And the little foam knee pad is one of the gardener pads. So it's going to be in your spring gardening section. Um, and so I think it looks so pretty kind of trickling down. I feel like this is such a beautiful romantic floral, like something you would see, um, you know, in uh, just a romantic area garden. I want it to feel like it's like a little secret garden, spring garden type feel. So I hope you guys are inspired by this to create a beautiful little lantern of your own. And again, I did just pop a couple little candles in here. I thought the, the little heart-shaped candle with the romance and then the other little candle was just so precious and sweet. And there you guys have that. So super fun and fabulous on a total budget um, and just very romantic and 
and precious. And I feel like kind of high end by leaving that glass in. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, and again, I do suggest using kind of a bonding glue if you want it to stay really good, like E6000 or super glue, but then also using the hot glue so you have that good temporary hold as well. So happy crafting on that one. Now for this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how you can make a super cute little kind of like garden box that looks like wood but isn't quite wood using some of these Dollar Tree faux wood signs. Okay, so I saw these in the Valentine's Day section and today is actually Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, my loves. I love you guys so, so much. But the, what we're going to do with these is we're going to take them apart because we're kind of done using them for Valentine's Day and I just bought extra ones. And you can pop those little signs out and then by adding some hot glue in and around this, I'm going to make it into like a stacked faux wooden kind of garden box feel. So I'm just going to pop these on here, hot glue them. Now, you always can use a bit of a bonding glue like E6000 glue or super glue if you need that for more of a permanent hold mixed in with your hot glue for that temporary hold. Now the next thing I want to do is add in some styrofoam. So I added a little dab of hot glue and popped some styrofoam into my little kind of wooden faux planter box. And now I'm going to use these pretty pretty greenery pieces and I'm just going to pop them in here to create a beautiful little green kind of floral box and again you guys can use pretty much any florals or greenery I found these last season at Dollar Tree and I think they're so pretty I've actually reused them in so many different goodies and things that I've shared with you guys um so I do have a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway going on, and I would love for you guys to participate in that. And all you have to do to participate in my little Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway is to subscribe or follow my social medias and to answer the secret question. So my secret question for this video is, what is your favorite spring plant? So when you look forward to spring and you're doing some spring dreaming, what do you guys like to garden or plant? Um, and do you like to plant flowers and greenery or do you like to plant veggies? I would love to hear what you guys are up to for this upcoming bit of spring and how you're doing some spring dreaming. I get so many ideas from everyone on this channel. I have so many creative folks here and I know even by commenting what your favorite spring flowers are that might inspire and bless others. Um, I have beautiful irises that come up in my front yard and I love to plant roses. So here is how the cute little garden box turned out. I thought it was super cute and just an easy way to build like a little faux wooden garden box. And I mean, you see these at the Target Dollar Spot um, or TJ Maxx, you know, and you know, they can be 10, 15 bucks. Um, if you see something like this with the greenery at TJ Maxx, so we made this on a cute little budget. So I hope this inspires you guys. And you guys can also look for the little Dollar for Tree crate. Dollar Tree DIY. I want to share with you how to create a really fun and easy little kind of rope basket tray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two larger Dollar Tree signs and I used these last season and they've kind of seen better days. So I'm going to repurpose them and I just use some popsicle sticks um, to glue them together. Now I'm going to run a strip of glue down the center of my sign and I have a bunch of nautical rope left over from my crafting from spring last season so I thought I'd put it to good use and what I want to do is I want to use the nautical rope to create a, a tray that has this kind of ropey basket appearance. I got on the Pottery Barn website and this is kind of a dupe of um, some of their rope baskety goodies that I see on there that are so so popular. I think it's fun to add elements of rope and basket to pretty much any decor, no matter what style that you love. I just think it gives kind of a cozy feel. So what I'm doing is I'm just hot gluing the nautical rope. And what you need to do is just kind of hang on to it um, while it dries and then run it down the opposite end. So you're going to hot glue a long strip and then run it down and then hot glue the next one. And then I just cut, kind of cut and paste it, I guess, once I get to the end of one of the strips of nautical rope um, and then I just started adding the new one so I think it took about three to four rolls of nautical rope for each side so probably about six to eight total if you're using two of these larger Dollar Tree signs you can also look for Dollar Tree chargers 
um, and those are in the dinnerware section, or you could just look at a, for a fun little tray that Dollar Tree already has in the shape of a tray form. That actually just popped into my brain. I didn't have any trays on hand. And I did want to make it rather large, kind of like a coffee table tray is what I was thinking, or just something I could display kind of some spring goodies on. So now I'm just finishing up the rope on this side. And then once I had that done, I had braided some nautical rope. Again, I did this last season. So this is just some of the nautical rope that I braided like you would braid your hair. And I'm gonna use that to kind of accent the ends of my tray and kind of just cover up the edges. The edges weren't super bad, but they were a little bit uneven in spots. And so I added that, I thought that looked really pretty. And then I had enough left over to add little handles so I'm just adding rope handles to my cute little tray and then to cover up where I had kind of glued on the handles I just used one more bit of nautical rope and boom I have this super little fabulous tray and instead of costing about 50 to 100 dollars it only cost probably about 10 or 15 um, depending on the size of the tray you make and the amount of nautical rope you will need so I thought this was a fun idea and I think it looks lovely tucked in to my little setting here with my spring floral goodies, some shot chinoiserie plates that we're going to do later on in this video and my little bunny and just kind of some spring goodies. So I hope this vignette gives you guys some ideas on how you can decorate um, on a budget and create a cute little rope tray pottery barn dupe. So for this next Dollar Tree DIY project, I want to share with you all how you can create a fabric oversized bow using one of these Dollar Tree place mats. So just take and cut the Dollar Tree place mat open, and you can really use any fabric for this project. And then take two of their little mini wreath forms, pop them into your little place mat, and then fold it over. So you're gonna fold it over once or twice and then you're gonna add some hot glue and that's gonna make sure that it stays on really nicely and it doesn't like, you know, unfurl or whatnot. So what we're doing is we're going to do one of those trendy um, fabric bows that I've been seeing a lot of crafters making now. I googled how to make one on YouTube and this was kind of the t tutorial that I found. Although uh, the lady that I saw, she just used fabric and she used the embroidery hoops, which I didn't have any of those and we are snowed in today. So I saw these little wreath forms and I thought they would be perfect. Now to tie mine off in the center, I am just taking a zip tie and I'm tying mine gently in the center and that's gonna kind of hold it together. And then you guys could run some floral wire back behind your bow if you want it to kind of stand up and have, you know, more of a shapeable form or just have a bit more stiffness. You could also use a dowel rod. The next thing I want to do is I want to finish off my bow by creating a little spot in the center. So I'm using some of this Buffalo check plaid ribbon. I actually had wanted to use a different ribbon. I couldn't find it. I'm really going to have to get in and reorganize some of my ribbon because you guys, it seems like every single time I organize my craft space, I ended up, I end up losing things or I don't know, misplacing them. So I'm going to really tomorrow, we're having a another snow day school's already been canceled so i'm definitely going to get in and be organizing my craft space and maybe i'll share it with you guys if you're interested in that so then to create some tails i'm just cutting another little piece of ribbon here and i always encourage you guys to dovetail your, your ends of your ribbon or at least cut them and make them to where they're not frayed and so what i'm doing is i'm just taking the ribbon and you cross it over on itself and then you cut the little triangle in the end and that gives it kind of a nice little finish and there's some tails and you could make some jumbo tails if you wanted back behind this with another piece of fabric so that's a fun idea we may tackle that one in the next video but here's how that looks i know these are so trendy right now these big fabric fabric bows now i have it popped onto a lampshade i think you know where they would be really cute is to put them on the back of a chair I may make some for one of for my chairs in my living room or I mean dining room um, but I thought it'd be cute also on a lampshade it looks a little bit oversized and obnoxious it also make a great wall decor or on a wreath or on a kid's bed or oh gosh anywhere that you guys just want an extra add an extra bow I love big bows and I cannot lie it's one of my favorite things in the world to make is bows just bow it up I think always adding a bow is so fun and fabulous and a way to make things feel boutique gorgeous For this next DIY, I want to share with y'all how you can make a beautiful, elegant, china-looking plate 
without spending the bucks. Okay, so we're going to take this chinette. This is just a chinette pa plastic plate. They come in decent sized packs, so you have quite a bit that you can do. And I'm just going to use some of this matte Mod Podge. I really like how this one went on. I felt like it was perfect for this project. And once you get a good, nice, generous layer, you can add on your pretty napkin. I do suggest to go ahead and take the lining of the other side of the napkin off. And I found this beautiful chinoiserie print at Tuesday morning. They have the prettiest napkins. You can also go on Amazon or, you know, any of your favorite little paper goods sites and find some beautiful napkins. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut around this pretty napkin and just cut it out. Now, sometimes I'll add a layer of Mod Podge to the back of my plates, but I didn't do that on this one. It seemed to be just fine. But if you have time and you want to make that extra effort, you can definitely do that. This one came out so, so pretty. I think this blue pattern is so beautiful. And these, you know, blue dishes can be so expensive. Look at how it looks with my little garage sale find teacup popped on top of it. I feel like it looks really realistic. I don't feel like that you can tell at all that it is plasticky. So, I mean, maybe unless you were looking at it up close. Now, this is really for decor purposes only. You could always add just some wrapped candy on top of this type of plate, but I really wouldn't recommend, you know, using it for any kind of real eating off of. But I think these are fun for decoration. You could also use some double-sided sticky tape and, you know, create these on a larger scale and even decorate your walls with them. Um, just make sure you get the good kind that doesn't tear the paint off your walls. But I thought this was a really fun idea on how you can create a beautiful, elegant plate for really not much at all, especially if you get the pack of napkins and there's about 25 in the pack. You can make a bunch of these plates and have a whole set and design all on your own. Now I have some larger of these plates, but I could not find them. So I can't wait until I find them and I can make some larger sizes as well. Now here's another idea if you get a napkin that only has a smaller um, print on it. You can always take your plate and I'm just taking a marker and I'm going around the base of the plate and I'm going to cut out the pretty print and then just Mod Podge that part of the print on the base of the plate. And then on the little lip of the plate, I'm going to add some paint. So that's an idea on how you can kind of work with things. Um, <clears throat> and I do know that you can look for really beautiful napkins at Dollar Tree. I've found really pretty napkins there before. So you guys just keep your eyes out. TJ Maxx has some really beautiful napkins in their spe specialty section. Um, again, so just get creative. I also love to look at my thrift stores. You can look for tissue paper and um, a really pretty vintage wrapping paper. That, that makes, makes some really beautiful plates as well. So I'm taking some white plate or white paint and I just added two layers of the white paint on the outside of my plate and bam, we have this beautiful, elegant plate again on a total budget. So I hope you guys are inspired. And I'm really starting to do some spring dreaming right now. Currently outside of my house, it is raining ice, you guys. And it's been doing that for about an hour. I've been working to get the rooms in my house nice and warm in case we are to lose power. I don't think that we will. Hopefully we won't. But we have lost power in this area before when we get big ice storms because the ice will go on for hours and it gets really heavy on the power lines. So crossing our fingers, we're all going to be okay and stay nice and warm. But I hope wherever you guys are at that you're staying nice and warm. Now, what colors are you gonna be using for your spring decor? Since we're doing some spring dreaming right now, drop a comment down below and that's gonna be the secret question for my little giveaway. I am giving away a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. So I wanna hear your um, pretty ideas for spring. I know that there's a really pretty green that's the Pantone color of the year. And so I'm gonna incorporate some greens and actually some blues this season. I don't know if you guys can tell already that I'm really crushing on these beautiful traditional blues. And I'm just really excited with the way that I'm gonna take my decor this year. I think it's gonna be really fun and fresh and kind of a little bit traditional, but mixed in with some French farmhouse chic and you know, my little eclectic kind of granny style is what I like to call it. Now 
for this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to make a really pretty chinoiserie style vase. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree glass vases and I did that plate. So I thought it turned out so pretty. I thought I would attempt a glass vase. So I'm taking my Mod Podge and I'm just getting a generous layer of Mod Podge all the way around my pretty vase. I use this on another project. So I'm really loving when I can repurpose and reuse these goodies. So I just gently laid the napkin down on top of the vase. And I do believe that I peeled off the white layer of lining of the napkin first. So when you're using napkins with Mod Podging, there's gonna be a white layer underneath. Be careful when you pull that layer off. Sometimes I've ruined my napkins before by doing that, but that will help um, your project, you know, just have a little bit better, um, it'll just go on a little bit better because you won't be trying to glue between two pieces of napkin. Now, I've also left my napkin also together. It just kind of depends. Sometimes it's a little bit of a trial and error for each napkin, depending upon how they're made. So I just trimmed off my napkin and then I decided to put some pretty flowers inside. So I just have these left over from last season. I actually haven't had a chance to go flower shopping yet. So anyway, I just popped in some Dollar Tree floral foam and some of these pretty little white flowers that I found at Dollar Tree. I'm not for sure what they are. You guys comment down below if you know. I love it that so many of you all know. In my last video, I think we figured out that um, my little gold birds were quail. I had a lot of people comment that, so we'll go with that. But let me know what these little white flowers are. Um, and so I'm just adding some greenery around the base of my pretty little floral here. Again, I just pulled these out quickly just to throw something in here to give you guys an idea um, of what it might look like. I think this vase turned out really beautiful. I mean, the glass vase was a dollar and then the napkin was not that much at all. I think it was a 20 or 25 pack of napkins for about $4.99. So you get a lot of bang for your buck if you find a pattern and print that you really love. Love. And I think it's a fun, inexpensive way to try out new colors and decor without spending a bunch of money on those type of patterns. If you're not quite for sure yet, I kind of really love to do that. And then it gives me a way to be able to live with some of those um, ideas and craft with them and, you know, not break the bank buying all new everything. Now I did buy some blue pieces last year. You can tell this pretty plate and the little, um, planter and I have a couple other things I have some ginger jars and a couple other planters um, that are in this pattern so I did enjoy it I think blue is very fresh and it feels like it brings a lot of vitality and newness and just calm into any space but really you guys use whatever you love have fun with it and go for it Now for this DIY, I want to share with y'all how you can make a quick little oversized bow using one of those pillow covers. So I'd love to order these pillow covers on Amazon and I'm not really using them as pillow covers as of right now. So I thought, hey, why not make a bow with them? So I'm taking these two little plastic plates and I'm going to pop them in to my pillow cover and that's what's going to kind of give my oversized fabric bow some shape. I'm going to go ahead and zipper it back together and then fold it over. So all you have to do is fold it over and pinch it in this center and then you can tie that off. You can also make a smaller fold and that'll give it kind of more of like a double looped edge here which what is what I decided to go with and then I'm just using a zip tie to kind of tie it off in the center and bam you have an oversized fabric bow. I think these are absolutely genius. You guys can accent it with any pretty ribbon. Here's an idea using sunflower. You can also use blue which is what I ended up going with because I'm using some blue and yellow in my springtime decor so I'm just taking the blue ribbon and I'm tying it off at the center and then I gave it a little dipple dabble of hot glue and then you can also add some tails by just running an extra piece of your bow or fabric through the front or the back you could make a big fabric bow tail in the back if you wanted and we'll attempt that in one of our next videos probably now you can add curly cues to your little ribbon tails here or you can just let them hang down you can match the fabric or make an accent color like I did here but there's so many fun ideas for how you can get creative with this and I know these big fabric bows are kind of all the rage they're what's hot and happening and in style right now I think they're a fun little bow for um, a chair bow or 
you know, uh, gosh, a wreath bow. You can do so many things with these, but I've seen some of the designers using them. So I just thought it would be a fun idea to attempt this and give you guys some ideas on how you can do this using items you might already have. And the best thing is, is all you guys have to do is really use a big fabric square and just fold it make sure you know that your ends are nice and not frayed but it was easy using the pillow cover because it already you know had the sewn ends and you could just pop it in and then zip your plates up now i've also seen people use embroidery hoops to make your loops or you can use plates like i did or even some of the smaller dollar tree wreath forms so as always i ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite diy in this video and which one will you be recreating i can't hear i can't wait to hear what your springtime colors are going to be and i hope everybody is staying safe and dry and warm no matter where you're at i know there are a lot of people getting a lot of winter weather so i thought i'd give you guys some cheerful smiles and I'd share with you guys binge Bear. It's now nighttime. We're in our jammies and he wants to introduce you guys to Tinky the cat who is quietly napping, minding her own business. And then Benji Bear decides to wake her up. And it's a little bit blurry because it is dark in my house right now. But there's Tinky. You can tell how excited she is. Not at all for being woken up by Benji Bear. So he's going to go on about minding his own business. And I kind of lured him away with the idea of a treat and for him to really leave Tinky alone. Now sometimes they'll play, but a lot of times they just seem to like to want to harass each other. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this little spot of Benji Bear and I love y'all so 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 much and I'm so thankful to have you guys here. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. For everybody that comes back and loves on me, thank you so, so, so much. You guys' kind comments and love truly and truly means the world. I want to encourage you guys to keep up the good work crafting and decorating. Don't forget to give yourself a bit of grace because we're all doing our best in our journey with crafting, decorating, and life in general. So also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and punch the bell. Click all. That will update you every single time I post a new video. Subscribing to my YouTube channel is totally free. Um, and go over and follow me over on Facebook. I have an Elise Romantic Home Facebook page. We have over a million people over there, which is crazy to me. And we have a wonderful little free group community you guys can join if you want um, to share photos of your home decor and DIY projects. I love to be inspired by you guys. I love to see what everybody's up to and all of that fun stuff. And always, always, always remember you have a voice in this world. If you're on this and watching this video it means you have social media so you can change the world by using your voice for good and by doing that I mean you can drop a kind comment in anybody's video in anybody's post and just be kind or you can like and heart something um, and the other way you can be kind is if there's something that you don't agree with or you don't like just scroll up past it's that easy so I just want to give you guys that trip friendly little reminder that what you put out is a lot of times what you're gonna get back so I love y'all I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight stay positive stay kind and be safe. And until our next video, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. We'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a super adorable placemat table runner. So we're going to take three of the Dollar Tree placemats, and these are in that Buffalo check plaid fabric. Um, print, but you guys can really use any placemat print. They always put out new placemats every single season. You're going to want to look for some of their lemon placemats coming up, as well as some of those pretty blue paisley ones as well. But what I'm doing is I'm just hot gluing the placemats end to end. Now, listen, if you'll have a sewing machine or if you're a patient sewer, by all means, sew it up. But I don't have a sewing machine, so hot glue is going to be working for me. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little ruffle for my table runner and I'm just using one of these Dollar Tree dish towels. Now let me tell you this came out so much better than I had anticipated. I was so excited for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the placemat over and then hot glue the little ruffle. Now you're going to take your fingers and ruche it as you go. Watch out for those fingertips so that you don't burn them. Um, and I did make this ruffle. I believe about 
close to an inch and a half, maybe two inches, um, but it turned out so perfectly. And what I loved about the dish towel is the dish towel already had that sewn edge. So I was able to hide the kind of rumpled edge underneath the table runner. So I thought this was pretty ingenious to be honest with you. I'm always really excited when I can figure something like this out, especially when it's a no-sew project, which I'm a no-sew gal here. I think eventually I'll take the time to sit down and learn how to sew and I can stitch things by hand to be completely honest with you. But if you can hot glue it and you're impatient like me, go for it. Um, this will just be on my dining room table. It really won't be used except for for decor purposes only. So I'm not super worried about it getting stained. Um, now, if you're going to have heavy traffic area and it's going to have a lot of food on it, again, you may definitely want to sew, but you could always even spot clean this. And I've washed some of my hot glued items before as well and they also make fabric hot glue so those are all ideas to keep in mind i think this is a fun and fabulous idea on a total budget the other place you all can look for fun little um uh, placemats to try this placemat table runner craft is at your local thrift store. I know my thrift store will have donations of placemats and sometimes they'll have a set of three or four and this would be the perfect um, way to use those. So fun ideas, take them and make them your own. For this next DIY, I want to share with you all how to take three little plastic clear plates and some of these Dollar Tree candlesticks and make a three-tiered tray. We're going to do this in a farmhouse style. And for the first tier, I'm going to use this white candlestick and I'm going to hot glue the clear plate to the base. You can use um, E6000 glass glue if you're using regular glass plates. Now these are plastic and there's a chinette kind of fancy crystal plates you might find at your local Walmart. Again, I'm just going to use hot glue on this project because this is going to just be kind of for decor purpose only. But if you're going to get a lot more heavy traffic with whatever item you're using, you may again want to use a little bit of E6000 thousand glue as well and that's going to be a sure bonding glue now i painted it this white with some spray paint and then i'm just going to take some black paint and run the black paint around the rim of the edge of these little white plates and that's going to give it kind of that farmhouse enamelware appearance so basically this is like a faux enamel approach to this but this works really really well and for a couple of dollars you have a really nice tray on a budget I love to use these on my coffee or by my coffee maker to hold my prayer cards and some other little goodies. You can also pile up some seasonal decor on your trays. That looks really nice as well. You could put jewelry on these. The other idea for you is to take these if they are going to be used heavily and seal them with some waterproof Mod Podge. The waterproof Mod Podge is at Michael's. You can order it online and it has the little blue label. So just that little tip from me to you. But again, these are so fun to use for decorative purposes. And by adding that little spot of black, it makes it look kind of like that enamel wear. Now you guys can always make this into a glam style by adding gold around the edges. And here it is into my little fluffy tablescape. I guess I got pretty creative with this one. I added so many bunnies and eggs, but I just just wanted to share with you guys some fun ideas on how to create this little three-tier tray on a total budget.
For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with y'all how to take one of these cute little Dollar Tree planters. And this planter is painted white. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want to make it into kind of like a high-end chinoiserie style planter. So this is an idea if you love that really expensive chinoiserie look without having to break the bank. What I did was I found the chinoiserie napkin at Tuesday morning. And then I'm just going to take some waterproof Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge the napkin in and around the little planter and I think that this is such a fun idea for how to create a beautiful piece of faux pottery or you know faux chinoiserie or really any print that you love I've always done that with more high-end ideas um, using this Mod Podge and napkin technique it's just such a fun way to change things up without investing you know hundreds of dollars into an antique piece or Really, you can find some chinoiserie for much less than that, but this is definitely going to be your cheapest option, and it's so pretty with these light, pretty blues, and you can tell I'm at the end of my rope now with this Mod Podge. I need to grab some more at the store, but I love the waterproof Mod Podge. You are going to find the waterproof Mod Podge at Michael's, and um, so I think that it's just the best way because I do plant some real plants in here. I don't want it to have a melt down now I'm not sure it would do great in the hot 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 summer sun um, but I think this would be nice and again I am just mod podging the inside of this with a napkin and you can always can always trim that off for video purposes I get in a little bit of a rush so sometimes I need to slow down take my time let things dry and then trim the napkin off there but I did want it to also kind of flip inside of the planter as well now here's how it turned out. The way that I styled it was I stuffed a couple of bags inside of this and then put the little Easter wreath down inside of that, added some faux little carrots and then my praying bunny. And you guys always ask about my praying bunny every season. And she's from the thrift store. She actually has broken legs. So you can probably notice her little legs are popped down in there. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you how I create a cute little Dollar Tree French style inspired planter. So I just took one of the Dollar Tree planters and I painted it white and then I'm going to take this little stencil and I ordered this Paris stencil with these kind of, you know, more fancy little, um, gosh, I don't know. It's just a fancy Parisian pattern, I suppose, but I ordered this off of Amazon and I'm going to take this little Dollar Tree sponge brush and just some black paint and I'm going to gently, very lightly kind of sponge the pattern onto the front of my planter. Now I will tell you with sponge brushing things, it's good to take and dab your sponge after you put the paint on, dab it onto a paper towel and that way your sponge brush doesn't globby up the paint quite as bad and to kind of go light with the pressure when you are um, doing this stenciling, um, that way it doesn't bleed through. So I always think it's better to have a lighter approach and then if you need to go back in and add more paint, um, you can always do that. Now the planter was a little bit of a challenge to get that kind of flat against the surface. Let me know if you guys have any tips on that, but I wanted to make it look like it was kind of vintage Parisian chic. I didn't want it to look like super perfectly sponge brushed and new, because I am going to rim the top of it with some black paint again to kind of give it maybe like a little vintagey enamel appearance or whatnot. I don't know. That was just my idea for it. I really do love French country decor and I think it's fun to add some of these ideas into your decor. And remember, you guys can always take these ideas and make them your own. So find a cute stencil that you love add it to a, your favorite planter and go from there. Now I'm taking my sponge brush and I'm going to round the top of my planter around the top here. 
And then there you guys have that. And then the next thing I thought would be fun was just to take, um, once I was finished with that, I let that dry. <laughs> I thought this turned out really cute, honestly, but I'm going to put some ferns in this. I'm going to take this little Dollar Tree um, styrofoam piece and then pop some fern pieces into here. Now, Dollar Tree is carrying these little fern pieces. They're not super realistic, but I think they look good enough. I'm going to be using this in um, my guest ba bedroom. So I thought this would just be a fun little way to kind of add a decorative piece on a budget. You guys know I love that. And I did pop some little burlap around that. And I would like to use some moss to kind of fill that in a little bit better. Now I have it popped into this Easter setting just to share with you guys some of the DIYs of the day. And remember, you guys can always take this and make it your own. Change up the colors and the pattern. Fun and fabulous ideas on a total budget. Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with y'all how I'm going to jazz up this cute little Dollar Tree bunny. So I did find this bunny last season, but I just want to share with you guys a fun little way to take one of the Dollar Tree placemats and make a cute little dress for your bunny. Or it actually came out looking more of like an apron. I don't know, but I just wanted to, you know cover the bunny and make her cute. So I just took this piece of a uh, placemat and I cut it in kind of like an apron style and then I'm just hot gluing the edges so it doesn't have any rough edges for her. So I'm just gonna take it and tuck it underneath her arms. Now I'm sure a lot of you all can make some really fancy dog clothes. But I thought this might be a fun little way to share with you guys how you could do this with your kiddos and grandkids and just make a cute little dress for your bunny. And you could really do this on any stuffed animal if you are hanging out with them and playing with them. I know my daughter and I, we used to create all kinds of different fun things um, for her Barbies. We would create them out of cereal boxes and cardboard boxes. We would create couches and movie theaters. She liked to follow this account. Um, I think it was called Froggy something, Froggy Girl or something. But she would see a DIY on that and then ask me to recreate it. And I'll be darned, I would recreate it every single time. I think I did that for years with her when she was little. And um, maybe I'll be able to find some pictures of those to share with you guys one day. But now that we've got Bunny's little faux apron on, we're going to tie a cute little white ribbon around her waist, and that's going to cinch her up and give her a little bit more of a waistline, um, because even though Bunny's fluffy, will give her a little bit of some shape here. I also cut some cute little pattern for her ears, and this is optional. She does have some pretty cute little pink ears, but I thought the black and white would be cute as well. I'm just going to hot glue that into the ears and then there you guys have that and you can have so much fun with your bunny you can add pearls hats i've seen so many cute bunny ideas that you guys share online i did give her of course a little double layered bow up at the top can't resist that and then i even added some buttons into the center of that dolly tree carries buttons and you can usually find them in a big jar at the checkout line at dollar tree so help me name Miss Bunny here. Drop a comment down below and that will give you guys entered into my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. And um, yeah, let's name Miss Bunny here. I would love to hear what the name for her will be. And um, my giveaway and winner will be announced February 31st. Um, and then I'll send that out to whoever the lucky winner is. And I'll be interested to hear what you guys' names are for her. And then the next clip you guys are gonna love, it's Benji Bear, Bean Bear. Benji Bear. He's such a little stinker, but he also has a bunny that I picked up. I believe I found this bunny for Benji Bear at TJ Maxx, and he loves to snuggle with this bunny. Now, he's got another toy in his mouth. Um, he's ready for some tummy rubs and some cuddles, and that's his little bunny bear right there. He's pretty tuckered out after a big day of crafting, so we love y'all, and thank you so, so much for being here. I'm going to create another um, planter or topiary type planter. 
planter. This time I'm going to use some of the flower garden planters from Dollar Tree and I'm just taking this really pretty craft paper. I actually found this craft paper at Hobby Lobby and it's kind of like the McKenzie Child um, pattern and so I thought that'd be super cute. So I'm just taking and I'm cutting the paper to fit the size of the front of the planter. Now if you wanted to and it might take some time you could try to go all the way around the planter by just cutting it and you know pasting the different seams together I was thinking about doing that but once I got the front part of this on I just thought that that was cute enough without having to try to patch it together and match up the um, little seams um, of the garden planter I think that would have driven me crazy to try to do that but if anybody has the patience to do that or you can also hand paint these garden planters in this pattern I did that last season for you guys and I'll try to post that video on Facebook for you guys um I do post several videos a day on Facebook to keep to keep you guys inspired to do tons of happy crafting. Okay, so I'm taking Mod Podge and I Mod Podged the paper to the front of the um, little planter and then I Mod Podged a generous layer on the outside. Once I had three of my planters done, I'm just adding in some foam to the bottom of them. And once I have the foam added, I flipped my planters over and took my craft tool and just cut a little slit in the bottom of my planters. And that's where I'm going to take these wooden dowels and pop the wooden dowels inside of the planter to kind of make it this three tier planner. Okay, so while I was planning this out, I kind of created it this way, but I want to tell you guys, if you're going to add flowers to it, add your flowers first. I kind of found that out the hard way and I'll kind of share with you guys as I go along. So anyway, now I'm just taking some pretty Dollar Tree flowers and I use these kind of white ones to pop into the sides. And then I had some of that really pretty long pink and purple Dollar Tree Wisteria that I just thought was so beautiful that I thought would look so pretty kind of cascading over the side of it. So it got a little heavy while I was trying to press the flowers down into that and it was making my three tiers kind of push into each other. So I just decided to disassemble that part of it and just do the floral part. So now with the florals, I'm adding in some pretty lilacs and just some really pretty spring flowers. And you guys, there's so many floral options at Dollar Tree that are really cute. Um, you guys can also pop into your local craft store, but I really do have fun with their florals. I think they're fun and beautiful and very springy and boutique on a budget. So I did add a little bit more wisteria and mostly this was a palette of white and purple and pink. So now I'm adding my little dowels back in. And the other thing I wanna let you guys know is is try to use two dowels. That makes it a lot sturdier as well. And you can also add some dabs of hot glue in there. Here is how my three-tiered garden planter turned out. I am pretty much crushing on this one as well. However, I will tell you that this garden planter was not as sturdy as I wanted it to be. So I might need to work out some of the mechanics of it. If you guys recreate this, let me know how you do with it. Um, I needed to like find some way though that the foam, actually I think what I probably should have done is to use the firmer foam. So I use like that soft foam for fresh flowers. Try using the firm foam. <laughs> I hope that helps. So thank you, you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia from Olivia's Rant at Home, and I'm a DIY crafty mama. I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique a gorgeous on a budget. Listen, I truly believe that you do not have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing, cozy, blessed, gorgeous home. And also, hey, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe and punch that little bell and click all, it will update you every single time 
time I post a new video. I post several DIY videos a week on YouTube as well as several a day over on Facebook. Now I have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page and I'll leave the link in the description box below. You guys can pop over there and see my crafting videos over there as well as join my free group page. Listen, I want to give you guys a space where you can post photos of your home decor and DIY projects. So thank you guys for everybody that's over there. It is such a kind and encouraging community, especially for the amount of members that we have over there. I am just so thankful and blessed. I pray over that community constantly um, because I feel like we just need a positive place for us to unwind and just have fun encouraging one another in our crafting and decorating adventure and our life in general in our life adventure as well. So, hey, speaking of life adventure, listen, I know everybody has had, the last couple of years have been kind of tough. Um, everybody's had something going on. I don't think anybody has not been affected. So I just want to encourage you all to stay in the faith. Um, don't forget to read your little prayer cards every morning. That helps me start my day out. Um, listen to some beautiful music that's encouraging and good for your spirit. That will give you hope and help ease some of the anxiety. Shut off that news for a little bit because you don't need to constantly be watching it if you want to enjoy your life, to be honest with you. Not that I'm not, I love news, but listen, it doesn't have to be on all the time. So that has always built fear in me, just to let you guys know. So turn it off, put on some beautiful music, read some scripture, and stay in the faith and stay looking forward to the future with joy and hope. Because I know every day that I wake up, I've been given a new day. God has given me one more chance to smile at someone, to love on someone, and to share a kind comment with someone. So if you can do that, and you're watching this video, you're on the social media page, all you guys have to do is heart somebody's post or heart my video or leave a nice comment down below. And if you need prayer, ask for it in this comment section below because I guarantee you that this is a praying community and um, you know just know that putting it out there may be helpful and so if you have a chance kindly comment towards someone um, and if there's something that you guys see online that you don't like girl you just keep scrolling past you do not have to comment on every single thing that you don't like trust me when we put goodness out there goodness will come back to us so Always be a lady and a gentleman and uh, use your voice for good words. So I love y'all. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. I'm wishing you a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. I can't wait for our next video and I can get back into my studio because right now it's absolutely freezing in my studio. And again, it is raining ice. So I hope y'all are safe and warm wherever you're at. We have a lot of crafting and decorating for this new season and I am so excited for it. So anyway, until our next video, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye. And I've come out here to say